What's up everybody? Welcome back once again to Exotic Astrology again and today we will continue or restart with our discussion on the Bhagavad Gita which I had started but due to some reason I had halted for some time but yes now I'm back. So from now on every alternate day will be a video on the Bhagavad Gita and the other day will be I don't know in some other random topic and also astrology will be there now what did we discuss in the Bhagavad Gita we had completed the first 28 verses of the first chapter very bad <laughs> we are still in the first chapter itself that itself is not over and my god there are so many chapters so many shlokas only 28 is over there are 700 shlokas so we need to make sure that we go fast all right so i'm having a goal in my mind that within uh, the next two to three years uh, three years three to four years maybe or roughly three years I should be able to finish uh, the entire <coughs> 700 verses because sometimes there are more than um, one verses which I will speak in a single video because sometimes the purports are very small all right and before beginning as I always say God is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there and before we start the Bhagavad Gita, it is very important that we offer our prayers to the Acharyas and to the Gurus who have imparted divine knowledge and the timeless wisdom upon us. Do you remember the prayer? <laughs> if you don't, no problem. I will say it again. Omagyan timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshudun militam yena tasmai shri guruve namaha. Oh, my dear spiritual master, please dispel the darkness caused by the blindness of ignorance from my heart and bestow divine wisdom unto me. He has already bestowed, we just need to continue it. All right, so in the first 28 verses of the Gita, what did we see? We saw the different armies which assembled in the battlefield of Kurukshetra from the side of the Kurus and the Pandavas. In the side of the Kauravas who were known as the Kurus, there were great generals like Bhishma, Drona, Karna and so many others. Duryodhan, Dushasan, although Karna was not fighting. And then there was Jaidrat and there was Lord Krishna's army, the Narayani Sena himself. The entire army was there, my god, one Akshohini division. And on the side of the Pandavas, we have Lord Krishna himself and the Pandavas headed by Yudhishthir and foremost of the warriors, Bhima, Arjuna, Nakul and Sahdev and so many other warriors like Dhrishtadyumna and Shikhandi and Drupad and so many other warriors, Virat. And we saw in the first 28 verses that the armies have assembled and Arjuna has told Krishna, Sena yor ubhayor madhye, please take my chariot in between both of the armies so that I can see what's going on, who's there on this side, who's there on that side. And as you know, this fratricidal war had to be fought because Duryodhana, the son of Dhritarashtra, the king, he had chopped off all possible negotiations that were offered by Lord Krishna yes and therefore this dynasty of the Kurus have come to such a precarious state where they have they have started being the delighters of each other's blood <laughs> but what to do that's inevitable because Lord Krishna wanted this war to happen so that he could clean off the garbage from Dwapar Yuga all right and now what has happened in the recent verses Lord Krishna has taken the chariot in between uh, both the armies and Arjuna has undergone a paralysis now in the earlier verse Arjuna says Arjuna could see within the midst of the armies both his grandfathers teachers etc yes and then he saw all the different grades of friends and relatives which means his cousins Duryodhan, Dushasan and all of these and became overwhelmed with compassion and spoke thus. Then Arjuna said, My dear Krishna, seeing my 
friends and relatives present before me in such a fighting spirit i feel the limbs of my body quivering and my mouth drying up as in hindi they say na mu sukh gaya so now we will start from the 29th verse and as i go in the standard pattern of saying the shloka once ideally we should say it thrice but in the interest of time i would say it only once all right so here it begins again bhagavad gita first chapter 29th verse i will see how many verses i can read today depending on how much time it takes to explain so the 29th verse is विपतुश्च शरीर मे रोम हर्ष जायते गांडीव समस्यते हस्ता परिदह्यते ब्यूटिफुल वर्ष माय होल बॉडी इज ट्रैम्बलिंग माय हेयर इज स्टैंडिंग ऑन एंड my bow gandiva is slipping from my hand and my skin is burning oh my god what he says my whole body is trembling my hair is standing on end i don't see my hair standing on end my bow is slipping from my hand it's slipping and falling and my skin is burning now regarding this gandiva this is a very special bow which was bestowed to arjuna by uh, agni dev when he had helped agni dev to digest the khanda prast because it is very important that whenever we read scriptures we try to link things from different parts all right not just that we read the shloka oh uh, my bow gandiva is slipping from my hand but where did this bow gandiva came to arjuna yes from where it came it is important to know that because that is a very Um, big milestone in arjuna's life he got that invincible bow gandiva from agni and then uh, agni dev said to him that whenever you use this nobody can defeat you you will be invincible in war he is extremely powerful and also he says my skin is burning here all right so see these are all symptoms of apparent weakness purport explanation there are two kinds of trembling of the body and two kinds of standing of the hair on end two kinds <laughs> such phenomena occur either in great spiritual ecstasy great spiritual ecstasy or out of great fear under material conditions my god the two cases when the hair stand on end and the body trembles is revealed here one is if you are in a highly spiritually elevated state or you are in a materialistic fearful state there is no fear in transcendental realization arjuna symptoms in this situation are out of material fear i will repeat arjuna symptoms in this situation are out of material fear namely loss of life because he was concerned about his cousins his own people yes he was a great personality that is why he was very compassionate this is evident from other symptoms also he became so impatient that his famous bow gandiva was slipping from his hands and because his heart was burning within him he was feeling a burning sensation of of the skin all these are due to a material conception of life so see when you are materially attached obsessed you will always have these four symptoms <laughs> your body will be trembling in fear uh, like this and your hair will be standing on end what will happen my god this will happen that will happen there's distress everywhere and then your bow will slip from your hand what is the bow here bow represents your duty your commitment your aspirations and what you decided to do that will start falling down means you will stop doing your duties your spiritual activities therefore attachment and spirituality goes ill together and your skin will also burn because your heart is palpitating very fast so see it's written here because his heart was burning within him he was feeling a burning sensation of the skin 
and then it's written all these are due to material conception of life so arjuna at this point was bound by these laws yes of course he is a great personality he is a paramahamsa he is a perfected being spiritually perfected being he is he can never come under material illusion but sometimes god uses great personalities to teach us a lesson so apparently now arjuna is having these four terrible symptoms okay so you can also check in your life and i also need to check i think <laughs> if uh, we go through these four symptoms that means we are materially attached only then this happens all right otherwise this will not happen it's only 10 minutes let's study another verse then we will see text number 30 नच संख नो मे अवस्थत भ्रा मे मनो निमित्ता च पश्या विपरीता केशवा तो ट्रांसलेशन इज आई एम नाउ अनेबल टू स्टैंड हियर एनी लॉन्गर माय गॉड आई एम फोगेटिंग माय सेल्फ एंड माय माइंड इज रीलिंग आई सी ओनली कॉजेज ऑफ मिस फॉर्चून ओ कृष्णा किलर ऑफ द केशी डिमन i am now unable to stand here any longer arjuna is telling i cannot stand here <laughs> this is what attachment does to us so the purport due to his impatience arjuna was unable to stay on the battlefield and he was forgetting himself on account of this weakness of his mind very bad now comes the fun the most important part listen to it carefully excessive attachment for material things puts a man in such a bewildering condition of existence my god bhayam duivihetani swayat bhagavatam 11th canto 2nd chapter 37th verse there is a similar reference to this in the 11.2.37 of bhagavatam such fearlessness and loss of mental equilibrium note such fearlessness or oh sorry such fearfulness and loss of mental equilibrium fearfulness means you are always fearful oh my god this will happen that will happen and loss of mental equilibrium your mind has lost peace such fearfulness and loss of mental equilibrium takes place in persons who are too affected by material conditions not in ordinary persons who are too affected by material conditions arjuna envisioned only painful reverses in the battlefield he would not be happy even by gaining victory over the foes that means he has already envisioned that i'll be in pain so now even if he wins the war that's what arjuna is feeling inside Oh my god even if i win the war what's the use i will anyways not have anything at the end of the day so it's like a waste of time the words nimittani viparitani are significant here when a man sees only frustration in his expectations he thinks why am i here why am i here why am i here why am i here <laughs> everyone is interested in himself and his own welfare no one is interested in the supreme self arjuna is showing ignorance of his real interest by krishna's will once real self interest lies in vishnu or krishna there you go now the medicine has come the conditioned soul forgets his and therefore suffers material pains so the conditioned soul forgets this thing that his self interest actually is in lord vishnu or krishna so therefore he suffers material pains because the soul identifies himself or herself with the body and then you have a mother you have a father you have a husband you have a wife yes and then if something happens to them it pains you that's what is happening to arjuna now the conditioned soul forgets this and therefore suffers material pains all right arjuna thought that his victory in the battle would only be a cause of lamentation for him there you go two verses completed today so basically 
to summarize what did we discuss arjuna displays different symptoms of weakness here body trembles he is not able to speak in the alia verses also it is there his voice is choked up he is not able to speak his gandiva is falling his heart is palpitating very fast all right so many symptoms he displays therefore if you want to be free from attachment then you have to read the gita and understand the scriptures only then you will know that you are not this body and things related to this body will not affect you very badly that does not mean that it will not affect you at all that will happen only uh, when you have reached spiritual perfection but at least till then we can try our best that we still don't get so caught up and so much attached that we become like arjuna's current situation here and yes arjuna is actually not having any of these problems but lord krishna is using him as a instrument to show to this world what happens so these four symptoms you can check all right that is it from my side if you want a personal consultation then approach me in my website and wish you good luck with the other verses <laughs> i hope you will be able to withstand all the other verses of the gita they are very heavy so give the patience give the fire running all right see you next time bye bye